In its development history, SpaceX has introduced many crazy ideas, which have surprised and amazed the world. Among them, the Raptor engine is one of their greatest masterpieces. The current versions of the Raptor engines are marvels of engineering, known for their high and robust performance. However, SpaceX and Elon Musk's commitment to innovation has driven continuous improvements to those engines, resulting in new variants of the Raptor. Recently, Elon Musk once again revealed new upgrades for the next-gen Raptor engine. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. In a recent interview with the famous YouTuber Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, Elon Musk revealed the latest changes and upgrades for the next version of the Raptor engine that SpaceX is producing, giving us a more direct view of their rapid development. In the video, we can see that Raptors look much cleaner compared to previous iterations. This neater appearance is mainly due to the reduction of external components, giving the engine a more streamlined and efficient look. However, it must be noted that this is not yet the Raptor 3 version that the team's aiming for. But these, these are still not like the, we're not to V3 here yet, right? No. This means that the current version, while more refined than its predecessors, is an intermediate step in the Raptor's evolution. The V3, which is still in development, is expected to incorporate even more advanced features and optimizations. So, what interesting details did Elon Musk reveal about this engine? First off, one of the key advancements is the development of next-generation Raptor engines that feature integral cooling circuits. This reminds us of a type of engine previously mentioned in Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk, the Elite 733T engine. Frankly speaking, the V3 Raptor engine shares some similarities with the Elite engine concept, but it's important to understand the distinctions between them. Elon Musk confirmed this when Tim Dodd asked him. Is, is the V3 the same thing as like the Lee engine? Sort of. The, the Lee engine was, I think we will do that at some point, but that's like a, that's really a total tear up. Uh, it, it looks like the Lee engine, but it's way more expensive because it still has printed parts, yeah. uh, for example. The Lee engine represents a more radical departure from the current Raptor design, essentially a clean slate approach that would require a complete overhaul of the engine's architecture. The lead engine concept incorporates advanced manufacturing techniques, particularly the use of 3D printed parts. While this allows for more complex and optimized internal geometries, it significantly increases the cost of production. The higher expense is due to specialized equipment, materials, and processes required for printing rocket engine components that can withstand extreme temperatures or pressures. In contrast, the next generation Raptor strikes a balance between innovation and practicality. One of its most notable features is the elimination of the need for an external heat shield. This is achieved through the implementation of integral cooling circuits throughout the engine structure. These cooling circuits are embedded within the engine components themselves, including critical areas like the combustion chamber, nozzle, and even the pre-burners and gas manifolds. This integrated approach to thermal management allows the engine to withstand the extreme heat of rocket exhaust without relying on a separate shield. As Musk also mentioned in his tweet, regenerative cooling and secondary flow paths have been made integral to the whole engine, thus no heat shield is required. Nothing quite like this has ever been done before. Furthermore, taking away the engine heat shield also removes the need for 10 plus tons of fire suppression behind the engine heat shield or any gas leaks simply enter the already superheated plasma surrounding the engine, rendering the leaks irrelevant. Externally, this design makes the V3 Raptor appear simpler and more streamlined, as many of the visible cooling channels and external piping seen in earlier versions will no longer be necessary. However, this apparent simplicity belies a much more complex internal structure. The integration of cooling circuits into the engine components requires sophisticated design and manufacturing processes. Each part must now serve multiple functions, structural, propulsive, and thermal management, which increases the complexity of both the design and production processes. However, that is not a major issue for SpaceX. On June 23rd, Elon Musk announced on X, we will begin testing it in McGregor within a week or so. In addition to the integrated hardware upgrades, SpaceX and Elon Musk have designed the next generation Raptor with fewer bolted joints, a significant improvement. Um, and we also eliminate a whole bunch of um, bolted and welded joints. Uh, wow. So especially the bolted joints, you really want to get rid of those. Yeah. The new designer aims to reduce the number of separate components that need to be joined together. This is particularly important for hot bolted joints, connections that are subjected to extreme temperatures during engine operation. These joints are often a weak point in rocket engines, prone to thermal stress, potential leaks, and failure. By eliminating these joints, the engine becomes more robust and potentially more reliable. 
Fewer connection points means fewer potential failure modes and less risk of leaks or structural weaknesses. Besides, SpaceX also strengthened more welded connections. Some parts of the engine will be welded shut without the use of flanges. Flanges are projecting rims or edges, usually on pipes or other cylindrical parts, that allow for easy correction and disconnection. By removing flanges and welding components directly, the engine gains several advantages. First is reduced weight. Flanges add significant weight, which is critical in aerospace applications. The second is improved structural integrity. A welded joint can be stronger and more resistant to extreme conditions than a bolted flange. And finally, reduce potential for leaks. Eliminating flange connections reduces the number of seals and gaskets that could potentially fail. Overall, all these changes directly serve Starship as SpaceX aims to enhance the durability and reliability of the engine, ensuring it can withstand the rigors of repeated space missions. However, nothing is easy in engine engineering. Elon Musk said, The next-gen Raptor engine is actually a little difficult to service because there are uh, parts that, are, that don't have a flange anymore, it's just welded shut. In traditional designs, flange components allow for relatively easy disassembly and replacement of individual components. With welded shut parts, this is no longer possible. For repairs or inspections, technicians will need to literally cut open the welded sections of the engine. This is a more invasive and time-consuming process compared to simply unbolting a flange connection. It requires specialized tools and expertise to perform such operations without damaging other parts of the engine. This design choice reflects a shift in maintenance philosophy. Rather than designing for ease and component replacement, SpaceX is prioritizing overall engine reliability and performance. The assumption is that with improved design and manufacturing, the need for frequent servicing will be reduced. It can be said that this new design by SpaceX and Elon Musk is a trade-off. SpaceX is betting that the benefits of a more integrated jointless design will outweigh the increased difficulty of repairs. This aligns with their goal of creating highly reliable, reusable engines that can support frequent launches with minimal downtime for maintenance. This approach underscores SpaceX's willingness to challenge traditional rocket engine design paradigms in pursuit of their ambitious spaceflight goals. It's a bold strategy that, if successful, could significantly advance the state-of-the-art in rocket propulsion technology. All these upgrades will enable SpaceX to create a rocket engine that is not only optimized to the fullest extent, but also incredibly powerful. It incorporates numerous innovations and optimizations that push the boundaries of what's possible in rocket engine design. This high level of advancement is necessary to meet the ambitious goals of SpaceX's Starship program, which aims to revolutionize space travel and enable mission to Mars. If we look only at Raptor 3 variants with the specification that SpaceX made in May 2023, we see incredible numbers. It's really generating a thrust force of approximately 269 tons and operating at a chamber pressure of 350 bar. By comparison, the closest engine of the Raptor that uses a phase combustion cycle with methane and oxygen is the BE-4 engine, which is expected to produce about 245 tons of thrust. The special version 3 surpasses the rocket engines such as RS-25 with 190 tons and RD-180 with two combustion chambers. And the Raptor 3 engine outperforms its predecessor, the Raptor 2 engine, with a number impressive as 18%. This substantial increase in performance is a testament of SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation and its commitment to pushing the limits of rocket technology. Indeed, 350 bar is a record-breaking number. It's defeated all the most powerful rocket engines. It's surprising because the previously thought chamber pressure belonged to the F-1 engines that propelled the iconic Saturn V rockets during the historic moon missions, operating at a mere 70 bar. The RD-180 engine used in the Atlas V rocket has a respectable chamber pressure of 267 bar. Moving forward in the timeline, we encounter the RS-25 engine, the mainstay of NASA's space shuttle program, which only reached 206 bar. Of course, that is not the final parameters of Raptor 3. Elon Musk mentioned in the interview, so long term, we want to try to get the thrust of Raptor up to around 330, maybe a little higher, maybe 335 metric tons. So that'll take us to a 10,000 ton thrust at liftoff. This makes Starship's thrust nearly three times that of Saturn V. It's crazy. Let's wait and see the new breakthrough of this new generation of engines. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.